Hello and welcome back to Let's Talk Chicago Bears. I know. Um, it's not a victory Monday, so you don't get the touchdown song. I know you're bummed about it, I know. But we're going to talk about the game. I got a lot to talk about. Uh, I know everybody's pretty bummed out. Um, and I get it. You know, it. It was, uh, we lost 13 to 19, we know that, and um, we're going to talk about that. So, uh, but I do have something first to say. Uh, A friend of mine um, who watches the uh, show from Illinois, he's one of my, he's, uh, he was an old boss of mine several times at two different companies, and now we're just good friends, and he was watching the show, and he said to me, so what's with, why do you call him Cabe? Is that a nickname for him or is that your nickname for him? And um, I said, oh no, that's my nickname for uh, William. So it's Cabe. So I'm always just going to call him Cabe because you know how me with names and and, and how I usually completely destroy them. So if I just come up with a name for you, that's what I'm calling you. So Williams is now Cabe on this show. (laughs) There you go, Gary. And I wanted to give a couple shouts out to people who did answer the question, what state they're watching me from. I want to give a shout out to Texas, Colorado, um, Minnesota, and Arizona. Welcome. And anybody else, if you want to, uh, if you're watching and you want to put in the comments what you're, where you're, what state you're watching me from, go ahead. If you're from Illinois, you don't have to because I know There's a lot of people from Illinois watching me, but uh, it's fun to see what kind of states they're all over. As I mentioned last week, I uh, I have a gentleman from England that's been watching me for a couple years, and then this year, Scotland joined us. So, hello. Bears fans all over the world. It's awesome. So, let's get to this game. Okay, so I'm going to do a few stats, and then we're going to talk about it. So, let's get going. So, my threes... (laughs) This is funny because this is the first time this has happened in my five years that um, it completely, you know, I have my rule of my threes, time of possession, turnovers, and penalties. And if you win those, you're in the game or you're going to win the game. So, well, I guess this kind of proves that the Bears were in the game. So time of possession, Bears, I was shocked when I read this. I, I just couldn't believe it. I would have bet anything that Texas had the bigger time of possession, but they didn't, believe it or not. It's only about a few minutes, but the Bears had 31 minutes time of possession. Texas had 28. Shocking. Turnovers, We Bears had two turnovers. Cabe threw two interceptions, and... Um, It actually should have been three interceptions, but the one interception that he threw got brought back to the Bears because the Texans got a penalty on defense, so it erased the interception. So it was two interceptions, and Texas had one fumble, and um, the Bears had nine penalties. This was a very bad game for penalties, and um, and I think it was for like 80 something yards and, um, Texas had 12 penalties and theirs was 115 yards of penalties. It was a bad sloppy game when it came to that. Although, um, there was some penalties that I didn't think that they were good calls. I got to tell you, I thought it was a very bad ref game, especially, and I think it was, was it the third or fourth quarter? I can't remember what it was, but, um, <clears throat> Williams goes out uh, to the sideline, and uh, no, 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 I take that back. It was Texas was um, on offense, and the guy goes out of bounds, and he punches number 23, our running back Johnson, on the sidelines. They didn't call a penalty. He should have been 15 yards for the Bears. We would have had a first down, and he should have been ejected from the game. That is bullshit. They said, oh, he'll get fined during a week. Well, that's bullshit. He punched him. You can't punch a player and stay in the game. I mean, what bullshit. Okay, so that was bullshit. And I'm going to show you a a couple examples of penalties. After a timeout, the Bears had third and four. Third down four yards ago. They came after. It was a timeout. I I don't know if it was a, um, I think it might have been an injury timeout. And so then the Bears come up. And what do they get? 
They get a delay a game. Now it's a third and uh, what, nine. They ended up putting. Can you fucking believe me? You don't get a delay a game coming off of a timeout. That's bullshit, Bears. And there was another penalty by Nate Davis at a start of a drive. Right away, we were first and 15. They ended up hunting. You know what? And then um, our defense, this is on our defense. There was a, um, the, it was in the uh, fourth quarter, and Texas was, um, oh, no, no, this was the, end of the second quarter I think this is when this happened they were um driving and then the Bears were stopping them and they um ended up getting a a penalty Bears had a penalty so that gave Texas an extra five yards it would have been um he ended up resulting in a 59 yard field goal try which they got had we had not gotten that five yard penalty that would have been what 64 yards he probably wouldn't have made it. So you see what penalties do? I hate fucking penalties. I do. I just, they are so destructive. And it was a terrible game for penalties. And and then, then there was a couple where they shouldn't have called them. And then there's some where they should and didn't, especially that punch. Ridiculous. Okay, so let's look at um, Cabe. Cabe was 23 to 37 for 174 yards. He had two interceptions, and he did have um, 44 yards of rushing. Uh, Strout was 23 for 36. He had 260 yards with one touchdown. Um, Cabe was sacked seven times, and he was hit 11 times. We cannot have that. And we sacked... um, uh, Strout three times. We're going to go over who did that. We only rushed again for 74, 71 yards. Uh, that's not acceptable. Um, Texas rushed for 75. We kept them under 100. That was really good, and we'll talk about that. But this rushing is ridiculous. Swift had 18 yards rushing. Are you fucking kidding me? Then Homer was in there for six yards, and my buddy number 24 Herbert had three yards and he got a touchdown but I this Swift guy I don't know what's going on but I am not impressed I know it's only game two not impressed now could it be partially the offensive line yes but I just just don't like this guy I don't see any real bursts on him you know and he's always getting tackled early I don't see those legs continuing to go Herbert And Homer, Herbert should be in there. And where's Johnson? Put Johnson back there, number 23, a running back. And let's see what those two can do. Because Swift, I know you signed him to a big contract, but he ain't doing it, man. Oh, man. You can't have under 100 yards. you got to get over 100 yards to help Cabe Williams out. The rushing attack is so important for this young man. And we're not helping him out at all there. Uh, the pass, well, you know they didn't get many yards. Moore had the most with 53 yards. Rome, number 15, had 33 yards. Carter, number 11, had 32 yards. And I like this Carter guy. I'd like to see him get in there more. And then my, one of my favorites, 85, Clement, our tight end, 27. I am still very unhappy about the use of Clement. I saw the other guy in there, tight end, getting used more than him. I don't understand what's going on. Now, Komet is a team player, so it can't be any trouble there. Is this offensive coordinator not into tight ends? Because I hope we don't have that problem again. We had it many, many years ago, if you remember. And we that's when we ended up getting rid of Greg Olson, that wonderful tight end that ended up going to uh, Carolina. We ended up trading him because we had, oh, uh, who was that offensive coordinator? He was the one that, um, oh, I can't think of his name, but he was he won a couple of Super Bowls, and he was um, the, uh, the, the uh, coordinator or head coach for, um, oh, I can't even think of the name. See, pickled. But anyways, it was years ago. I think it was with Fox was the head coach. Mike Martz, that's it, Mike Martz. He didn't like tight ends, so we ended up trading um, – uh, God, the guy I just said. <laughs> I'm 
<laughs> now I forgot his name. Oh my God. 66 and pickled Greg Olson to Carolina, which did Greg Olson a big favor because he had a great career with uh, Carolina and now he's in the uh, announcing booth. But I hope we're not, we don't have a coordinator like that because Clement is a huge asset, and I do not understand why they're not using that for feel, um, Williams. Williams could really use his, he catches everything. He gets, he can run, he gets available. I don't get it. I, 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 I'm really not happy with this offensive coordinator at all, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So I'm going to give you real quick the scoring, how it happened. Uh, first of all, there were six punts by each team, if you can believe it. The first quarter of scoring was started out, both teams on their first drive uh, went down and got field goals. So Texas had a first, it was uh, three to nothing, and then the Bears on their first drove, drive went down and scored a field goal and was three to three. That was it for the first quarter. Then we, had, then we go to the second quarter, and that's where Texas does most of their um, – score in Texas had a uh, touchdown so then it was in the second quarter it was three to ten then they got a field goal it was three to thirteen and they got another field goal it was ten to sixteen and then the Bears in the second quarter got a uh, um, a touchdown uh, number 24 Herbert our running back got a touchdown so then it was at the uh, at, then it was Excuse me, so I, I kind of misspoke, but they got a touchdown. It was 10-13, and then Texas came in at the end of the um, – that's when they had the um, penalty where it should have been a 64-yard attempt, which he wouldn't have made. We got a penalty. We gave them five yards. It was a 59-yard field goal. Then at, at, at half, it was 10-16. There was no scoring in the third quarter by either team. Obviously not the Bears. And then the in the fourth quarter, Texas got another field goal. So it was 10-19. Um, um, and then the Bears, wait a minute, and the Bears got another field goal. So it was 13-19. So, yeah, not good. Not good at all, right, guys? No, this is not acceptable. Okay, so the only good thing about it is the defense. So the defense had another, in my opinion, good game. You know, they were out on the field a lot because our defense, our offense cannot get a sustained drives going and aren't scoring points. So it's hurting this defense again. We're doing the same thing we've done for years and years and years. The offense wears out our defense. We did have some turnovers. Number 97, Billings, another great game. He caused a fumble, and number 31, by Byant. I don't know his name, number 31, gets, he got it, and he, he ran it in for, he got it for a couple yards, so we got the ball. There was three sacks by the defense, number 49, Edmonds, number 99, Dexter, and number 57, our homegrown Sanborn from Lake Villa, Lake Villa, Lake Villa. That's where I lived for 30-something, 30 32 years when I lived in Illinois. I mean, I lived, I lived in Illinois 59 years, but that's where my husband and I had our home for a long time. So the defense is doing their job. The top four tacklers on defense, 49 Edmonds, 31 uh, Bard, um, 53 Edwards, and number nine Brisker. And they were all over the field. Those guys had top uh, tackles. So the defense is doing their job, okay? And, and we know that. So let's talk about the offense. The problem we all know is that fucking offensive line again. Here we go again. It was a problem last year. It was a problem the year before, a year before. And it's just, I don't understand um, I was worried going into the season, and it was warranted. Poles has ignored the offensive line, or he's not doing his homework. He, he nails it on the defense with getting guys, but he just cannot figure out the offensive side of the Bears. He signed Swift, and right now, I know it's two games. So I will admit, if this kid turns it around and runs up and down, but right now it don't look like he's even going to get 1,000 yards this year. So what the fuck did we sign him for? So I'm saying right now it's a miss on um, polls for that one. I mean, and Swift, is it partially the line? I don't know, but I just don't like his running style. 
Cade was sacked seven times, as I said, and hit 11 times. This cannot keep happening because what's going to happen is, and this kind of happened to Fields, even though I don't want to talk about him, but they're going to get gun shy and they're going to get scared and then they're going to start making mistakes when that, when that, that line starts to crush around him or he turns around. That's what keeps happening to Williams. He turns around and these guys are in his face. He cannot have that. This kid is never going to be able to set his feet and throw a ball. You can't, you, I don't know. This offensive line is so bad. We are so in trouble here because this kid is never going to improve unless this offensive line, something happens drastically here. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what Poles is going to do, but it is a big problem. Big, big problem. As I mentioned, Cabe threw two interceptions, could have been three, but they were both really bad. He should not have thrown those balls. This is a rookie move. He's got to learn. I'm not... Yeah, I'm not happy about it, but it didn't end up being really terrible. That's not how the other team, yeah, we gave the ball back to Texas, but still, they didn't run up the score because of those. He's got to learn how to throw these balls either close to a receiver or really out of bounds. He's got to work on throwing these balls out of bounds. They have got to work on that. And this kid... You know, and he missed, as we all know, several throws. One in particular, there was two in particular. Moore was wide open, and number 11, Carter, was wide open, and he had them both, and he overthrew them both. Now, did he overthrow them because he's just not there yet, and he's overthrowing? Or could he be, was he rushed? Could he not set his feet? If he can't set his feet and get going, it's going to be a problem. Now, the one thing I'd like to see the Bears do more, and they're not doing with him, is roll him out because this kid can throw um, when he's being rolled out. You know, of course, that does kind of go back to setting his feet, but when he's on the run rolling out, not the run, not running for his life, but I mean a planned rollout and then throw the ball, why aren't we seeing more of that right now to get him going? They started out the game the way they should, short passes here and there, but the running game is 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 hindering the offense and him too and it's be a real real problem but this kid i think this game is too fast for him i don't think he's admitting it um he's saying he's fine he's seeing it i don't think so i think this game is way too fast for him and of course the offensive line is not his friend and you know in the last two games the offense has only scored uh 15 points. Is that right? No. No, we scored. Yeah, 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 because we scored 13 yesterday. Duh. And then they scored two, only two points in last week's game. So 15 points offensively scored in two games. Not acceptable. Not acceptable at all. And I thought uh, Moore looked pretty frustrated and um, especially when he didn't get that one pass, he overthrew him, and, and and when he was leaving the field. But I read somewhere this is what he said, so maybe not. You know, he did look really frustrated, and we cannot have this. But this is from Moore quote: "When it's finally, when it finally connects, and and well into the same cylinder." It's going to be good. He's talking about the offense. Wide receiver DJ Moore said it after the loss. Right now, we're building a puzzle together. Until we get the puzzle fully complete, it's going to be up and down road. I guess that really is a good way to look at it. Um, he's right. So right now, one, offensive line, awful. Two, running game, awful. And three, the game plan called called by the OC, awful, bad, awful. I don't like what I'm seeing from this offensive coordinator. I feel like we're starting to get, it's starting to feel like Getze number two all over again. Because Getze didn't get it, and it feels like Getze all over again, doesn't it? I mean, really. And, and um, I, I don't know. Now, the defense, they were the bright spot yesterday, even though they gave up 19 yard points, but still, um, they have only allowed in two games 36 points, and that's not bad considering how bad your offense is and how long they've been on the field. When defenses are on the field a long time, they get tired. 
And when they get tired, they give up points and they make mistakes. Our, our defense is still hanging in there, but it's early in the season. We don't want to wear these guys out, and that's exactly what they're doing without the, without the offense playing there. So we're, we're still, again, playing a one-sided game. Well, two-sided. Defense is playing, and special teams was playing. Offense isn't. So you don't have all three aspects of the game happening. And we can't win games there. You just can't do it. The Bears did, the defense did hold them to 75 yards rushing. And last week, um, their rusher had 148 yards. So the Bears did a good job on the rush. They really did. They kept it under 100. And if you can keep your um, the other team rushing under 100, your, your defense is doing a good job. Stroud did throw for 260 yards, but he's a damn good quarterback, and he didn't get 300. And he only had one touchdown on the day. So that is good by the defense. Everything else was um, um, field goals. So the problem here is the offense. And 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 it's as I said, offensive line, running game, OC game call. The game plan is awful. I don't understand it. I know that few see this is the problem. Fluce is the defensive guy. That's why the D and he's calling the defensive plays. That's why the defense is good. And polls I'm thinking he's a defensive guy because he has not been able to do anything on offense for us since he's been there. And this is the first time I've really criticized him in the three years, but I think he warrants it. Um, it's, it it's showing its ugly head that we have no offensive line and the guys that are in there suck. And it, this is just not going to get better. It's, I mean, well, we hope it gets better, but if it doesn't, it's going to be another fucking long season. And quite honestly, guys, this old lady can't handle another one. I, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just, ugh, you know what I mean? And who, this is another stupid thing. I got to say, um, the coaches get a D, D plus for me for this game. Because whose freaking idea was it to challenge those two stupid, but challenges that made us lose our challenges turned out we didn't need them but they we lost two timeouts because you lose timeouts when you do that now that's the new rule and they didn't have timeouts at the end of the game and they certainly needed them so those two challenges were ridiculous they were clearly good plays and if it's coming from the booth upstairs whoever's doing that needs to have their head smashed in a few times and if it's coach Flus, shame on you because you know what those were bad and that could come to haunt you so you better get better at that Flus. it's a long season and you better get you better get better on that um those challenges because you can't afford to lose timeouts you know we should have won that we could have won that game if you look at the stats, you look at how close it was, everything was pretty much the same, except for the passing was really the only difference, but the rushing was the same, the time of possession was the same. Um, the t I didn't write how many plays, but they were the same. There were so many things that the Bears were right there. They were right there. And if we had an offense that could just move the ball, or if Cabe had completed at least one out of those two passes that <coughs> he overthrew. Who knows? We win that game. I mean, it. when you really look at it and think about it and look at the stats and everything, the Bears could have won that game. But they have no offense. And this is the NFL, not peewee, not high school, and not college. It's the NFL, guys. And... You got to get it together. I don't even know what to say. I'm just repeating myself now because there's really nothing else to say except for offensive line, running game, bad OC game plan, period. And if you're talking to people, that's it. It really, really is. And, um, you know, I am mad about a few things. I think that the play calling was bad. I think that the decision on Coach Flus on those time, on those um, challenges, 
The only thing that shined yesterday was the defense, and there's only so much the defense can do. The backfield, they were giving up some passes. I wasn't digging that too much, but it seemed to me that the backfield was playing back, that they didn't want to give Strout huge um, yards. So they kept everything in front of them yesterday. So, Because I, I, I was thinking about it, I'm like, geez, what's going on? Because you really think about it, no one really got away from those guys. There might have been one play that there was, one guy made some real yards, but mostly when they caught the ball, we were there to knock them down. So I'm thinking... I'm thinking that was their strategy to stay back a little bit. Don't let them get up behind you for a long, you know, touchdown or a lot of chunk of yards. I think there was one where they made 40 yards on a pass or run. I'm not real sure. I can't remember. But um, but that was really about it. Everything else was just chugging along, making little chunks here. Several times we had them backed up along the defense several times and that's what did get on my nerves there was like two or three times where we had him third and 13 15 something like that because we got after him or we hurried strout and we got extra yards but then the bears gave him first downs so but you know what i'm just not going to get on the defense real bad on that it was the defense that did that but they're out there for so much of the game it's ridiculous. You're going to wear these guys out. And they were playing. They were getting close to him. They uh, Texas has a much better offensive line than the Bears, that's for sure. But the defense was still getting there. I don't know. I, um, I just really can't say anymore. I pretty much said it, so there's no point in going over it. Uh, we lost. We're 1-1. One one. Williams and the offense have an awful lot of work to do. And I don't know what the hell Poles is going to do because we're in the season. You can't go out and get other players. So what the hell are they going to do? I don't know. I really don't. So all, all I know is our offense has an awful lot of work to do. And um, defense, I'm proud of you. Keep it up. We need you. Um, and I was saying at one point last night the defense has to score points. Well, you can't rely on that. You just cannot do it. But they got more turnovers. I'm proud of them for that. But... You know, that's just about it, guys. So that's the game in a nutshell. There's no point in beating a dead horse and repeating myself 500 times. So we've got, I got a show I'm going to do Friday. We're playing Indianapolis on Sunday. I don't know. Is it at home? I think it might be at home. And uh, it's a 10 a.m. game for you guys. So the Bears should play better, hopefully. Um, Indy is one and one, I believe, and uh, we're one and one. So, because they won yesterday and they lost their first game. So, um, I think are they two and zero? Oh? See, pickled. I'll know on Friday for sure. <laughs> pickled. <laughs> And my head, I am much better. I know I had a friend reach out and said, you know, they, they heard my promo and then they heard the first show how I've been sick and I have. Two and a half months I've been fighting something. I am much better. My head is still pretty messed up on all the drugs they've had me on, but I am much better. Um, I couldn't have done this show three to four weeks ago at all. I've come so far. And I know my friend said, well, you look pretty good. I said, yeah, I, I am. There's still some issues, which I'm not going to go into. You don't even want to know. But um, but I'm getting there, not 100% by any means, but I am better. Like I said, a month ago, I could never have done this. So I'm glad I'm feeling better. And my, my buddy said, don't let those bears get you down. You need to get better because I, I, I got to get going and I got to feel better. So I need to be, keep going up, 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 up. And if the bears lose, I'm going to go down, 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 down. <laughs> Okay, that's it. No point. In, uh, so, uh, but yes, but it's only one game. I'm concerned. Yes, but again, one game. And I'm going to give some of these guys the benefit of the doubt. But if they don't get their shit together, this town and me are going to be all over them. Okay, I'm just saying. All right, guys, as always, I like to leave my show love one another, respect one another, stop hate. Let's stick together. Times are tough, um, you know, with the election and the economy and all that stuff. And people are just really stressed out. I talk to people all the time and everybody pretty much says it. Um, and, and it's like, I know, I don't get it. So 
we just got to stick together and, and respect one another and help each other out and smile and, and be positive. Let's, you know, we can't control a lot that's going on, even though we would like to, but we really can't. It, it is out of our hands. So we just got to keep a, a positive, love one another. And Bears fans, we got to stick together here. It's tough. It's, it's could be another long season, which this old lady cannot handle. Uh-uh. I'm 66. I've been doing this for 49 years. And there, I do want to do a show. I have all the stats written down. I was going to do a show in the summer, uh, just and it was called Ode to Being a Bears Fan. But I was sick, and I couldn't do it. So I, I, I think I might add that in if we keep losing. But it is pretty funny because basically I what I do on that sh- will do on that show is list all the coaches, quarterbacks, all the losses, wins, it, it, it's not pretty. I've seen more losses in the 49 years that I have seen wins, and that is just not cool. And, and, and how I can still love them, I don't know, but I do. I know. Something's wrong with me. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I love you guys. Keep on watching. Tell everybody to watch me. Let's have some fun. Let's hope we they can figure something out. And next Sunday... Maybe we'll, our, our offense will look a little bit better. Okay, guys, I love you. I'll see you Friday. And um, let me know where you're watching the show from, what state. And as always, go Bears from Vegas, baby.